we will continue with what we did um, the last time. And as you, uh, you have been told, um, when you have you have a, you have a question, you can raise your hands, or you send uh, a message by the chat button, and I will attend attend to you. Okay, so we are um, treating acid bases and salts. Acid bases and salts. Uh, last week, we were able to look at uh, acids. We looked at what acids are. We looked at um, the various definitions of acid by uh, certain uh, scientists. We looked at um, branston Lowry's definition. We looked at uh, Arena's definition. And we looked at Lewis' definition. Then we looked at um, the sources of the acids. We also looked at the um, uh, basicity of an acid. Um, then we look at the properties of an acid, giving us um, how to prepare hydrogen gas and carbon dioxide gas. So um, if you are new, you can uh, contact the ad admin to give you the notes, the previous notes, so that you will be able to understand well what we did. So today we will continue with bases or a base. So the last time we looked at acids, now we look at base. We will define the base according to the uh, how we define acids and look at their properties. We would compare everything and know how the two looks like. After we are done, then we look at salt. Salt that you know. Okay. Now, before we do that, we look at the oxides of these acids and bases. We look at the, how their oxides are. Now, oxides are binary compounds. That is two co two or more compounds. Or let me let me use two. Binary means two. So two compounds that contains oxygen. These binary compounds are two compounds, are two, uh, two uh, elements together as they, as they form a compound that contains oxygen. Now they are one, we have one, acidic oxide, acidic oxides. So they are oxides of metals which can dissolve in water to form acidic solutions. They are oxides of metal which when dissolved in water, forms an acidic solution. Example, you have carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, then nitrate. Then two, basic oxides. Basic oxides. Now these are oxides that when they dissolve in water, they form an alkaline solution or a base solution or a basic solution. So the word basic there is just a base. So the oxides of metals when they dissolve in water, it forms an alkaline solution. So examples you have uh, copper two oxide, calcium oxide, magnesium oxide, and sodium oxide. The next one, amphoteric oxide. Amphoteric oxide. Now these are oxide of metals with both an acidic and basic property. So what this statement uh, means or explains is that they, 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 they behave as both an acid and a base at the same time. They are not neutral, but they can act as an acid. They can show acidic property. And again, they can show a basic property. So you can have, they can react with both acids and bases to form salt and water. So they can act in two ways. They are um, they are by in nature. They they can act in any direction. For example, you have zinc oxide, lead oxide, lead two oxide, um, aluminium oxide, 
silver oxide, um, zinc, the same zinc oxide. So they, these are all examples of um, uh, amphoteric oxides. Then the last one, you have neutral oxides. As the name sounds, they are neutral. So they are uh, oxides of metals that ne are neither acidic or alkaline. So they are in between acid or in the base. So you have uh, carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxide. So these two are just examples of substances that they are neutral in nature. They are not acidic, they are not basic in nature. They are in between. Okay. Now let's look at the basis itself. Now we define an acid from the Brancellaris uh, point of view as proton donors, the uh, donors. Now, a base, according to Brancellari, is that a base is a proton acceptor. So it accepts proton, not like the that of an acid where it donates proton, but this one it accepts proton. Definition number two, you have Arrhenius' uh, theory or definition. It defines a base as a substance that when dissolved in an aqueous solution, will break down to yield hydroxide in solution. Hydroxide, OH, OH, OH ions. So as compared to the acid, you would have the acid yielding H+, plus, that is hydrogen ions. But with the basis, you have it yielding hydroxide ions, that's OH ions in solution. So you have an equation that you have magnesium oxide. When this magnesium oxide dissociates, you have uh, magnesium and two moles of hydroxide. Two moles of hydroxide. So after dissociation, that has been dissolved in an aqueous solution. You have it yielding an OH ion. Then the third one, that is the uh, Lewis acid, uh, Lewis base, we define it as an electron pair donor to form a bond between itself and the hydrogen ions. Now, with this acid as compared to acid, you notice that the, 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 the Lewis define an acid as an electron pair acceptor. But over here, here is uh, the bases are electron pair donor. So they donate this electron pair to form a bond between itself and the hydrogen ions are, are present in the compound. Now a base that is soluble in water is also known as an alkaline. So in a... Um, Further, um, uh, in our further projections, you would, you, 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 you would hear me saying alkaline, alkaline. Um, it's, it's just a base that has been dissolved in water, or a base that is soluble in water. Okay, so let's look at examples of... Um, this basis, examples of the basis that we have. We have sodium hydroxide, that is NaOH, potassium hydroxide, KOH. So if you can see, if you can notice, you notice that with this ones, there's OH, OH, OH attached to most of them. Then we have zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is a base. Copper, copper two oxide, or copper oxide, ion three oxide, magnesium hydroxide, ammonia, ammonia, then calcium hydroxide. There are a lot of examples that you can make mention of, but this is just a few that. You need to understand, but most of them are having this OH and oxide of solutions. Now let's look at the strength 
and concentration of a base. Well, when we're looking at an acid, we look at uh, the strength and concentration of an acid. So over here, we will we'll look at it according to the strength, so strong base and weak base, that is the strength. Then the concentration of a base, we we'll look at concentrated base and dilute base. So let's start. Strong bases. They are bases that completely dissociate or ionize in an aqueous solution. So just like the, the strong acids, they completely ionize, they completely dissociate, they completely mix in an aqueous solution. Now these strong bases, they give a high amount of hydroxide ions. Examples are sodium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide. These are two, as, uh, magnesium hydroxide is also a strong base. So you can have an equation there, you have NaOH, when it dissociates, you see that it has completely given out the AOH uh, ions. It didn't keep one, it didn't keep some, there, so the sodium didn't keep some. It completely gave out everything. Then weak bases. Now they are bases that dissociate or ionize partially in an aqueous solution. So they don't give out every, every uh, 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 yeah, hydro, uh, hydroxide ions. So it yields just a few number of hydroxide ions. Examples of these weak bases, you have uh, ammonia, sodium, bicarbonate. Now look at the equation here. We have ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide, NH4OH. So when it dissociates, you see that you have NH4, then OH bond. You notice that the ammonia didn't give out anything. Sorry, the ammonia didn't give out any ion. But just taking off a few of the OH bond, that is all. But there's another OH attached in a way because of the presence of the hydrogen uh, uh, atoms present. Concentrated base. As the name sounds, it's concentrated. So it has more or high amount of base in a, in a given volume of a solution. So let's say I use the example where when you are, you, you are preparing the soup and you add more salt to the soup, the soup tastes very, 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 very sweet. Now, it means that there's more of the, the salt than the water or what you're taking, you're using to prepare the soup. So that is a concentrated uh, salt solution that you prepare. When you want to dilute or you want to reduce the, the, the amount, how sweet the, the, the soup that you are preparing, that you add a lot, of, a lot of salt, what you do is that you add water. So when you are adding water, it means that you are, dilute, you are diluting the, uh, the, the, the soup. That applies to diluting a base where it contains less of a base in a given solution. Okay, so I've been asked to um, go over the, the weak bases. I said, as, as you can see, it ionizes partially. It doesn't give all of its OH bond, uh, its hydrogen bonds. It doesn't give all of its uh, uh, share all of its um, hydroxide. Now look at the equation there, NH4OH. Then it, it will give you ammonia. Then you have um, your, your OH bond. Now, in natural sense, if uh, that is supposed to happen, if it was supposed to be a strong base, it would take most of the hydrogen from uh, the ammonia. But because ammonia, ammonia itself, this is ammonium, because uh, uh, NH, N, uh, NH3 is ammonia and NH4 is ammonium. Now, because ammonium itself is a base on its own, those hydrogen ions cannot be taken away from them because that defines their nature. So what they can do is that the little that has been attached to itself to give it out, which is, it is giving out just a partial, uh, something small or, or, or on its own. But look at uh, sodium hydroxide in a strong base, NaOH. 
Now you have a, a, a so the sodium as a metal and an OH bond on its own. So with this one, it can just give out every uh, aspect of hydrogen ions or hydroxide ions from itself. So in a way, the NaOH will, will ionize completely to give out completely. But with the weak basis, it would give out just partially, leaving some of the hydrogen I, I, uh, atoms or ions left in the equation. So, um, let me see the name. Uh, nah, nah. If you are not okay, you promise me. If you are okay, let me know. Thank you. Okay. So let's look at properties of this basis. What are the properties of a base? How would you say, or what, what, what would you say a base is? How do you know that this is a base or not? So compared to an acid, one, the bases they have a bitter, uh, they are bitter to taste. They are bitter to taste. Two, they feel, they, they, they feel uh, soapy or sleepy bet between their fingers. They are slippery in nature. Okay, I may, um, it's soapy or slippery. There's a Y uh, supposed to be attached to it. Feel soapy or slippery between fingers. Three, you have a pH greater than seven. So acids have pH less than seven. They have pH greater than seven. And they turn red litmus paper blue. They turn red litmus paper blue. They are also electrolyte, so they can also conduct electricity. And it's not only acids that are corrosive. Bases are also corrosive when they are highly concentrated. Then the next one, bases, they react with acids to form salt and water only. They, we looked at that when we were dealing with the, uh, the properties of an acid. Then the last one, bases, they react with ammonium salt. They react with ammonium salt to give out ammonia gas. So look at the equation there. You have CaOH2, that is calcium hydroxide, reacting with ammonium chloride, that is an ammonium salt. Now this gives you calcium chloride, that is calcium chloride is a salt, that is CaCl2 plus water, then plus ammonia. So that is ammonia gas that you are seeing at the far end. So all bases reacting with an ammonium, an ammonium salt gives you, uh, or it, it gives out an ammonia gas. So always remember this reaction. When uh, a base reacts with an ammonium salt, it gives out or it yields um, ammonia gas. Okay. If there's any question, you prompt me. If there's no question, to we can move on. Now, what are these sources of base? Where can we find these sources of base? One, potassium hydroxide. That is KOH. Potassium hydroxide. KOH. It can be found, or its source is uh, ashes of plants and their parts that have been dissolved in water. So cocoa pot. You bend the ashes, you, be, you bend the, uh, the pores of the cocoa, the ashes is what we, have, we refer to as the potassium hydroxide. You have the magnesium hydroxide. That is milk of magnesia. Milk of ma magnesia. Uh, this, this is commonly uh, found in uh, or used. Or where you can find this milk of magnesia is they are used as uh, laxatives. Uh, 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 how would I explain that the laxative to you? Um, someone will say stomach wash. It's when you are constipated or, or you, you are uh, you are someone who cannot um, you've, you've done something that has made you constipated. You can't uh, defecate easily. When you take this milk of magnesia, 
it allows that so to enable your you to free your bowels uh, easily. Request so you'll be surprised what happens to you. I I tried some the last time, and in a way it helped me, but I regret it. But it, it it's good for you. It's good to help you. Then another one, another base is ammonia. This can be gotten from the composition of organic matter. One of the most common um, organic matter that decomposes that from ammonia that you can try easily is um, decomposing urine. So you, you leave the urine for, uh, you unit, let's say someone united into a, a container somewhere, leaves it for about a week or more. Now the point when you go there, what the solution that you have there is ammonia. Now, ammonia in its own, it has a very foul and pungent smell. It smells a smell that looks as if it's very sharp. Very, very sharp. Then you have calcium oxide. That is heating of limestone. These are all uh, sources of base. Now, if you have any questions, you let me know. If there's any question, you alert me. Okay, so we we'll look at safety precautions when handling an acid or a base. Safety precautions when handling an acid and a base. Now observe and see which one is new to you. There's none. <clears throat> one, handle them with care. So that they don't they don't spill on the skin. So you handle the acids and bases with care so that you don't spill on the skin. Now when they spill on the skin and it's corrosive, you are at risk. Two, any spill of an acid or a base should be washed quickly. So the moment you have that and it's not too corrosive, you should wash it quickly because of it. Um, Reactions that you have with your body. Then three, in diluting an acid or a base, the acid or base is added to the water rather than the water being added to the acid. When you're diluting an acid, you don't add water to an acid, but rather you add the acid to the water. That is to prevent any cause of explosion or any form of um, big spillage that would occur. Again, when you are doing this dilution, whereby you are adding um, the acid to the water, you 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 you, you, you keep stirring or you stir very well to enable even distribution of this uh, particles in the solution. Then the last one, don't you don't taste um, this acid and this in the, in the lab. You don't go and go and taste them if they if. if it has a, a particular color or you think it's water so you're going to drink it after taking them then you know what will happen okay so we're always mentioning um uh, basically to form salt and water now that process that whereby axis reacts with um, a base to form salt and water is what we refer to as neutralization reaction neutralization reaction so this is it's a reaction whereby an acid reacts with the base to form salt and water only i forgot to highlight i forgot to highlight something so let me try and do that very well so neutralization reaction is a reaction of an acid with a base to form salt and water only. You can have a reaction between an acid and another base. It gives you salt and water and maybe carbon dioxide. That is no neutralization reaction. The moment it gives you a third product, it is not neutralization reaction. But this neutralization reaction gives you and salt and water only. 
So you can have the equation the acid plus base will give you salt plus water. And you have an example is sodium chloride and ammon uh, hydrogen chloride, that is uh, HCl. Then you have um, sodium hydroxide to give you sodium chloride, that is a salt, that is a common salt that we have in our, our home, plus water. Now, when this neutralization reaction is complete or it takes place, the pH of that reaction or the pH of that is seven. That is, it, it has attained a pH of seven, meaning that it is neutral because of the salt in water. So at the point where you have salt in water, the pH is, is seven, that is neutral. So the acid has pH less than seven, then the base has pH greater than seven. So the product of what is formed in between, that is the salt and water is neutral. Now the reaction that takes place in this uh, neutralization reaction is one that gives out an amount of heat to the external environment. Now the process whereby this uh, uh, heat is given out from this reaction, that is a neutralization reaction, is an exothermic reaction an exothermic reaction. So you can define an exothermic reaction as a reaction whereby heat is given out to the surrounding from a reaction or in a reaction. Then we have um, endothermic reaction whereby heat is given in or heat is taken in from the surrounding into the reaction. But over here, we are dealing with neutralization reaction. So the heat that is produced is taken out to the surroundings. So this is neutralization reaction. If there's any question, you are let me. Okay, so how can we apply um, or where we apply this neutralization reaction in our everyday life? In our everyday life, how would we how how would we um, apply them? So one, in treatment of stomach acidity. In treatment of stomach acidity. So with this one, if um, it's already explained the statement. So let me read it out so that you know if there's any additions, then I'll add them. So too much hydrochloric acid in the stomach results in indigestion. Which is which is sometimes painful, yeah. So substances like milk of magnesia is used to neutralize excess hydrochloric acid in the stomach. I explain what that milk of magnesia is. So at the point where you're, 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 there's so much acid in your stomach, that is hydrochloric acid in your stomach, the milk of magnesia is a base which will neutralize the activities of this uh, reaction of acid in your stomach. Two. In treatments of soil acidity or soil alkalinity. As I said, the alkalinity is soil base or how basic a soil, the soil is. So with this one, with this one, you have in, in most plants, they grow best in neutral soil. So they like a neutral component of the soil. When the soil is too acidic or too alkaline, Plant growth tends to be retarded. So they have the, the plants tend to have a retarded growth. They can't grow too well. Now, when the soil is too acidic in nature, quick lime, that is calcium oxide, a, a base, is slick, ox, uh, slick lime, that is calcium hydroxide, also a base, or chalk, calcium carbonate, also a base, a base in a carbonate form, is added to the soil to neutralize the, the effects of the acid. So when the soil is also basic, we add acid to the soil to also neutralize the activities of the base. Treatment of insect stings. So you can have um, two uh, stings from either a bee or an ant. So the stings are usually acidic. Usually acidic, that is, uh, they contain component of uh, metamic acid that can be treated by rubbing lotions of lotions containing bases. So the base in the lotion neutralizes the uh, acid stain. So it's just a, a, 
uh, natural thing that takes place. But with us, uh, our daily life today, when we are uh, we are bitten by a, a bee or an ant, we are going to eat the uh, scratch or eat the place till the place gets swollen before you stop. Okay. Salt. So we've looked at an acid, we've looked at a base. Now when an acid and a base react, salts are produced. So we look at the salt. So these salts are components from an acid and a base, mush together, or oh, they, they, they place the two together. Now we define the salt as a compound in which hydrogen ions of an acid, one, has been replaced by a metallic or ammonium ion. So you are having both an acid and a base reacting to give you the salt. Salts are mainly formed from an acid, from when an acid reacts with a base, as I did mention. So examples of salts, you have sodium chloride, normal salt, copper two, um, petrol is of it, six. So there are a lot of salts that you can make mention of. Now we'll look at the various components of salt. That's how come out. I mentioned only two here. So there are a lot that you would, you would see when we are progressing. Now there are basically four types of salts. Four types of salt that we have. We have normal salt. We have acidic salt. We have basic salt. And we have double salt. I'll go again. We have normal salt. We have acidic salt. We have basic salt. Then double salt. Now these are all these salts are, are explained in a diagram, a, a table, explaining the um, the normal salt. What the normal salt is. Then examples of the normal salt, likewise that of um, the acidic salt, the basic salt, and the double salt. Okay, so let's look at them one after the other. We'll start with the normal salt. That is the type of salt. So what is we'll ask what is normal salt? So this normal salt are basically salt that are formed when all replaceable hydrogen ions of an acid are replaced by a metal. Others will say by a metal cation. A metal cation. Someone was a metal cation. So you have normal salts formed when all replaceable ions, replaceable ions of hydrogen or replaceable hydrogen ions of an acid are replaced by a metal. So examples you have sodium sulfate, potassium carbonate, um, ammonium ammonia sulfate. Um, sodium chloride, calcium chloride, they are examples of normal salt. Now, sodium chloride is the most simplest salt that you ever find. The most simplest, the most commonest. That is what you have at home. Normal salt. And when you go to the, the sea, the salt that is collected from that point is the sodium chloride. In here, uh, uh, in chilling fuel, it's, um, it's a normal salt. Now you can have other type of salt as potassium chloride, magnesium chloride. Um, most of chloride, chloride, chloride are mostly salt. Um, if you know this, uh, the potassium chloride is what um, we know as a uh, uh, can we? That is how I can mention. I don't know how best I could mention that. 
but that is our best. I, I could mention that can we? It's uh, that the, the potassium chloride and this gunpowder. They are all they are all salt in one way or the other. Okay. The second one, acidic salt. Now, this uh, salt are from one part, not all, but rather parts. So let me let me try and indicate. There we are. So the normal salt you have all you have all replaceable hydrogen ions of an acid being replaced by metal. But with the um, the acidic salt, they are from one part of the replaceable hydrogen ions of an acid are replaced by a metal. So just part of an acid, uh, replaceable hydrogen ions of an acid are replaced by a metal. So examples of this acidic salt, they are salt of, uh, normally you have hydrogen atom in their compound. So you have um, uh, sodium sulfate, but this can be referred to as an acid. So you have sodium, hydrogen, tetra, ozo, sulfate, six acid. Then you have potassium, hydrogen, um, tri ozo carbonate, five uh, acid. Then you have sodium, hydrogen, tri ozo carbonate, um, four acid. Then potassium tetra also so potassium hydrogen tetra also sulfate six acid. So we all have this hydrogen hydrogen um, atoms or ions present in their compound. These are acidic salts. When you see something like that, it's an acidic salt. Then move to the basic salt. Basic salt. Now these are salts that are formed when insufficient acid is present to neutralize an alkali or a base. So when there's insufficient, a very little acid is present to neutralize a given base. So it means that the base will be more, 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 more than the acid. That is what we say is a basic salt. So examples of basic salt, you have basic zinc chloride, you have Zn into bracket OHCl. That is a basic zinc chloride. Then you have basic lead carbonate. Basic lead carbonate carbonate. So um, the two examples that I have in there are all basic lead carbonate. That is PB into bracket OH2. That is one basic lead carbon uh, lead hydroxide. Let me mention that one. Then you have uh, PbCO3. So they are all, these two are basic lead carbonates. Okay. The last one, double salt. Double salt. The double diving explains gives you uh, an idea. Two. Two. Double means two. So double salt. So these are salt that contain two different cations. In different or in different or with different oxidation states. I know you've not you, you some of you might not you not done oxidation states, but I'm sure JHS you should have done oxidation number, oxidation number, and oxidation state. So yeah, you should have done that. So there are salts that contain two different cations in different oxidation states. Now these salts are normally assume, or they normally assume for chemical properties of their composite salts. So their components, they assume the chemical properties of the components that make up the salt. And these salts are usually called alums. 
alum, alum now, the alum you know. This, this is, it, it's a double salt. Now, examples of this alum or this double salt, we have ion 3, ammonium, tetra, also sulfate 6 alum. Ion 3, ammonium, tetra, also sulfate 6 alum. We have F2, uh, Fe2, SO43, then dot NH4, into bracket 2, SO4, then dot 24 water, that is uh, uh, water of crystallization, so hydrate, uh, in a way, hydrate. So it means that it contains a bit of water. Then two, you have chromium potassium ion, uh, alum, sorry. Chromium potassium alum. Now this is made up of ClSO4 dot K2 SO4 dot 24 of water. Then we have uh, Aluminium potassium alum. Aluminium potassium alum. Potash. That is Al2 SO4 into bracket 3 dot K2 SO4 dot 24 water H2O. Now I'm mentioning these equations in a way that may be if you are using maybe if you're using a phone and we are not really appearing then you know what we are really talking about okay so this table explains and show you shows you the type of salt their definitions and examples i'll go over again you have normal salt whereby all replaceable hydrogen ions are replaced by a metal or an acid very well then acidic salt, just parts of the replaceable hydrogen ions of an acid are replaced by a metal. Basic salt, you have insufficient acid, a, a low, a small number of acids present to neutralize a given base or alkali. Then you have double salt, salt that contains two different cations in different oxidation states. Then you know that this double salt are not usually called alum. Okay, so let's look at how we'll be able to repair salt. If you have any question, you are free to ask. Let's look at how to repair um, salt. How do you repair this salt? Now, salt may be prepared by some methods. These are, so one, we look at um, by neutralization reaction. Two, precipitation method. Three, an acid with a carbonate and four, an acid with a metal. So these are, uh, this uh, is how salts are being prepared. These are how salts are being prepared. Okay. So let's look at the first one. Neutralization reaction. We've already explained how what or what this neutralization reaction is so there's a reaction between an acid and the base to form salt and water only now this method is achieved by titration method it's uh, usually uh, done in the lab now in this method a soluble acid is mixed with a soluble base a soluble acid is mixed with a soluble base so you have in the, in the lab uh, you have a conical flux um, whereby it contains an acid, then another one containing the base. So you take a pipette, then you uh, you suck out the base into the pipette. That is with a particular measurement. Then you uh, pass it through. Uh, a into the base. Now the point where this occurs 
they react, then salt and water is produced. So this titration, titration method, or you can define titration alone as a method by which concentration of a solution is corrected there is is a method by which the concentration of a solution is determined by reacting another substance whose concentration is known. Now with um, this method of preparing salt, we use indicators, acid-based indicators to indicate whether a salt has been formed or not. Now if you use an indicator, and at the point where you're using the indicator, it shows a neutral, um, uh, indicates neutral. It means that so it's a, it contains salt and water. But the moment it indicates um, a color or component of an acid, it's still an acid. Or it means that it contains more of the acid than the base. And if you do it and still contains, it gives an indication or a color of a base, it means that the base contains or is more, more, more than the acid. So it's giving you the base. So you have to try and do it well. Now, as the definition of this titration state, you have to have or know the concentration of one um, uh, one component of it and the other. So you need to measure it well. So that it balances or, or, or it, it gives you a balanced reaction. So you have an equation for this titration method or neutralization reaction as hydrochloric acid, HCl plus ammonium hydroxide, uh, sodium hydroxide, NaOH. So this is an acid, this is an acid, then there's a base, then they react to give you salt and water, an acid, a base, acid, base, they react, then they give you salt and water only. That is one method to uh, obtain salt. Then two, by the precipitation method, that is by mixing solutions with or solution containing two soluble salts. Now this is done by preparing insoluble salts. In this method, the solu solutions of two soluble salts containing ions of the insoluble salt are mixed together. So you have calcium triosonitrate 5 here. It's an insoluble salt. Then you have sodium tetra sulfate six insoluble salt. Now these two, when they are mixed together, <clears throat> they form a precipitate. Now this precipitate is what is washed and dried off. These are the precipitates of um, the, 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 the reaction that is formed from uh, the calcium, triodonitrate 5 and sodium tetraodonitrate 6. So the precipitate that is formed from this reaction is washed. After it has been washed, it dries up. So when it dries up, you have the salt. Now this same, this same method can be obtained when um, you, are, you are evaporating a normal salt uh, from the sea. So when you take refresh seawater, then you apply heat to the sea water, when that happens, the molecules of water will escape the surface of the water, leaving crystals of the salt. But with this one, you don't wash them. <laughs> you just, after it has evaporated, you have um, uh, crystals or cubes of this salt. That is what usually they, they call it a green the the rocky salt. Maybe. So that method has been it's just a simple one that you fetch the uh, uh, water from the sea. Then, because it contains um, um, uh, salt, you, you, you apply heat to it. 
then the, the, the water will skip the surface of the, the substance, uh, the solution, then leaving the, the salt crystals for you. Another method to obtain salt is by reacting an acid with a carbonate. So you can have the reaction, the acid with carbonate will give you calcium triozonitrate 5, 5. So this is the salt that is, it has been gotten from the reaction between an acid, an acid and a carbonate. Now over here, carbon dioxide and water is produced. But what we what, what we are re, we are really interested in is the salt that is being produced here. Then the last method that you can obtain is by reacting an acid with a metal. Reacting an acid with a metal. So when you react acid with metal, you have um, a salt being produced then hydrogen gas. So this one will escape the surface, leaving the, uh, the salt for you. So you have um, hydrochloric acid here as, a, as, as an acid, then zinc as a metal. So it gives, it gives you um, zinc chloride. Or you can have another example as the hydrochloric acid, ATL plus sodium, Na, giving you NaCl plus H2. So hydrogen gas and sodium chloride. Magnesium is also there, also a metal, so it also gives you magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. So these are the various ways in which um, uh, salts can be produced. So we've looked at um, acid, we've looked at base. And we can, we've understood that an acid and a base, when they react or when they fuse together, it gives you a component of salt and water. And we looked at the salt on its own. That is a reaction gotten from um, an acid and a base. Then we looked at how these acids can be prepared, the titration method, the precipitation method, reaction with the carbonate and the reaction with an acid. To end our discussion here, in our next lesson, We'll look at the use of this in uh, use of indicators to indicate whether it's uh, a component or a substance is an acid, is a base, or is a salt. So, in our next lesson, we'll combine all the three components acid, base, and salt together. We'll combine all of them together. So that you understand, you, you, you look at the correlation between an acid, correlation between the base and a salt, giving you the type of colors, the type of um, uh, indicators that you can use. We have um, phenolphthalein, um, methyl orange. Um, uh, we have a lot of that would. Uh, now indicators to indicate the presence of acidic salt or basic uh, mediums. So we'll end our discussion here. If there's any question on, on what we've done so far, you ask, then I explain to you. So oxides, bases, strength, properties, sources, safety precautions, we look at a neutralization reaction, um, applications of this reaction, and then we looked at the salt, the salt and how to prepare this salt, the type of salt. So if there's any question, you let me know.